Silver, yeah, silver is still in this range. It, it actually needs to break out this 2650 area with some, you know, force. <laughs> it's not gonna go anywhere before it does that. It's just in the base building mode. We've kind of tried to anticipate it a few times. This is why I don't like anticipation. I, it's, it's not a great way to trade. It's better to just, you know, wait for things to actually confirm. You pay a little bit of a higher price for certainty. Can I show where the breakout in shop would be? Uh, kind of about right here-ish. And if you use the weekly chart, maybe 12, 80 plus, but I think it's gonna do a pocket pivot thing here today. Come on, a Snap is about to take out the excess highs from Friday. And it did exactly what SC did. Two, I mean, it's it's not even funny. It's, it did exact same thing like SC did. Broke out, took out the lows of the day, found support on the rising av moving averages, started building higher lows in the 60 minute, and then it's just straight up since. You, you can't make it up. It's the exact same thing. Broke out. Lost the lose of the day, stopped us out, found support on the rising moving averages, built the wick on the 60 minute, and then it reclaimed. Went back into range, found support on the moving averages, and these triple ETFs, they make such big moves when they go. Much better to be in these than in individual stocks. I just looked back at, you know, stuff like TQQ, TNA, FNGU, etc., etc., I would have been better off, instead of trading all those individual stocks, I would have been better off just trading those triple ETFs. Because they make bigger moves. I'm talking about the, like, the November to February period. With some exceptions, of course, but... What's this Noven doing today? Okay, it's holding up, that's good. You know, when you have something like this... Now, it did close really weak on Friday, it kind of even took out the uh, intraday lows, but... If this thing holds up for a few days, build some higher lows on the 60 minute, you know, this could very easily have an ex um, explosive secondary move, like a flag break. The volume was enormous and it gapped up above the moving average. If you look at, for example, Iros today, look at where it gapped. It gapped to these moving averages. It couldn't reclaim the, the declining 100 and 150 day. Gapped up below them and then just straight down. BRCU acting great, NRGU acting... Look at how these things are surfing the rising 10 day. Like, that's exactly what you want to see. TNA too. Like, like TNA for example, look at November, February. It surfed the 10 and 20 for, you know, four months. Oh, uh, snap just uh, breaking out over the excess highs. We gonna win over those uh, day traders who shorted the excess size. I still don't know what it is, but it feels like we're gonna win over them. Fubo too, later this week could be a sweet setup. This thing doubled and now it's kind of uh, flagging. I, I think the 20D needs to catch up. Maybe another three, four days and then it's gonna be interesting. This is something I really like. Some smart people really like this thing fundamentally too. Some smart people I follow, so not that it matters for trading, but still, it adds conviction. Do you know what AMC potentially reminds me of? It's a 20 billion market cap, so it's it's up, what, 400% from the from where it broke out from base. And it's kind of surfing the 10 day after this pullback. It really reminds me about QS. This thing was too, it was up like 300% from the base breakout, 350%. It pulled back, found support on a rising 10 day, and then it started building higher lows. And it eventually went to 57 billion market cap, or 47, sorry. So down here, it was like 25 billion market cap or something. So that's something I'm gonna pay attention to. If you can go sideways for a few days, build higher lows and then start grind higher because that's something, you know, that has doubling potential. Beautiful intraday flag, man. These high ADR stocks, man, if you're a day trader and you, you have, you're awake, man, you can make so much money. Just focus on these uh, very liquid high ADR stocks that are in, like in play. 
so many ways you can trade them long short you know just you know trade these like intraday bull and intraday bear flags uh haven't read the oliver kell book he had great returns last year um so he's legit i'm not le uh, sure if the shannon guy is legit i mean you don't know you know 99 percent of his uh net worth could be from book sales you don't know I i'm not sure does he have a re track record I've, I've i've seen that book uh, mentioned a lot of times well oliver kell is you know it's probably not a huge account because this yeah, a lot of the stocks he trades are very liquid you can clearly see you know you can get a good idea how big accounts people have by you know looking at the stocks they trade and mention and when you see someone you're claiming have a multi-decade Inc incredible track record and then he mentions some small cap stock that they're trading you, you know they're full of shit so potential flag setting up for later this is workhorse and bbig these things could be very explosive how did you go from 5k to 1 mil uh seven eight years no 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 that's for losers i think i did it in uh you know what i'll check i went from 5k let's see from 2013 so my accounts like this is after tax and um, after uh, commissions and after living expenses so my accounts were five uh, actually 9k in 20 may 2013 that was the turning point for my trading may fanny may happened 20 i was down like 50 percent on the year and that was the turning point so may 2013 i had 9100 in my trading counts and let's see when was when did i hit 1 million here january 2018 i hit 1.4 million so somewhere in december 2017 is my account reached 1 million so about three and a half years to get from 9k to 1 million like if you have a small account guys it's not hard to make a few hundred percent per year it's not hard if you have a small account. Like really, you can make, if you're a short-term swing trader, you can make most years probably easily a couple of hundred percent. And that's the thing, you won't have a small account after a few years. That's the beautiful part. Imagine not rebuying. That's, that's you know, you, you gotta, if you get shaken out of a good setup, you gotta get back in. Because the setup becomes stronger. Once you get stopped out of it and it comes back, it's a stronger setup. That's what a lot of people don't realize. They're like, oh, this stock is the worst thing ever. It's gonna go on my do not trade list. And I used to be like that too. I'm still sometimes do that mistake, but you know, if the setup is le legit good, it becomes stronger after a shakeout or even two shakeouts. My thoughts about workhorse is it's flagging and building a great flag. Like I've said like two times before today. Those are my thoughts. I think it could be a nice one later this week. It made a big move. It doubled in a few days and now it's digesting this move and building a flag. It's, it's, it looks powerful. It looks explosive. BBIG too. Similar. Except that Workhorse is coming off from lows while BBIG is kind of, you know, breaking out of a range. Um, and also Bayon Meat also building a kind of a high tight flag type of a thing.